Hello, everyone, and welcome to another episode of The Powerful Man Show. I am your host, Doug Holt, with my co-host, Tim, The Powerful Man Matthews. Tim, I always love seeing your face smile when I say that. How you doing, man? Yeah, I was just wondering, why are you smirking? Like, you're just, uh, you're looking at me, smirking. You've always got an ulterior motive whenever you introduce me. Uh, it's always funny for me. <laughs> yeah. I see you pacing back and forth in the video, getting all excited to see what I'm going to say. Uh, How dare you let me down sometimes then and not actually introduce me as an honorable sir that I am. Ah, there you go. Well, Tim, the topic of today is a little bit different than about you. We're going to talk about how to <laughs> regain your wife's trust, uh, which is a common thing a lot of the guys have issues with this is, you know, you're going through a relationship or your marriage and, you know, over time, either it happens chronically time and time again or acutely, like something happens like a, an affair or something along those lines, but over time or whatever's happened, you've lost the trust of your wife. Does this happen to a lot of the men that you're talking to? Mm, all of them, <laughs> <laughs> quite frankly. Uh, yeah, it is. It's, it's a common problem. And sometimes the guys can be quite confused thinking, you know, I've not cheated. I'm a good husband. I am doing all, of the th you know, I'm doing what I think I should do as a good husband, which is to go out there and provide for the family, you know, make money. So, they can sometimes feel a little bit lost when they realize that they've lost the trust of the wife. And I get it. I can understand why they would feel lost, right? You know, I think it's, it can be, I think right now it's a very confusing time to be um, a businessman, especially a successful businessman trying to juggle and balance a family and a business. It's a very, confu a very confusing time. But, you know, to these guys who feel like they've not done anything wrong, what I often say to them is, or I often ask them rather, not tell them anything, but what I often ask them is, you know, well, how often have you told your wife you're going to do something? Let's say, you know, you're going to be there for the Christmas play, the, the kid's Christmas play. You're going to pick the kids up from school. You're going to be home on time for dinner. You're, going to, you're not going to work tonight when you get home. How often have you told your wife that, you know, you're going to do any of those things and then for whatever reason, it doesn't happen. And these guys, you know, there's a long pause at that point <laughs> as they probably debate whether to be truthful. <laughs> and then they, uh, you know, tell me that it happens often. And, you know, there's always a way to justify it, right? There's always a way to justify, well, you know, the kids want to go to Disneyland this year or my wife wants to go away with the girls or, you know, I've got to hit this milestone because that's when, insert whatever, you know, story it is or justification. So often the men have, have justified the reason why they can let the wife down not so many times. But what happens is, although they're not cheating on their wife sexually, you know, they're cheating on the wife emotionally. Mm. And it erodes over time. Uh, so it, the erosion over time is, you know, is what really can kill a marriage. And you always hear this, you know, at my age, I'm in my forties. You see this a lot where you see marriages completely erode and the guy's going, well, I just didn't see it happening. I, I didn't see it happening or I didn't, you know, I didn't see it coming where she filed for divorce. And I can't remember the stat, Tim, but I think someone said it's over 70% of divorce filings are women or the actual wives that are yeah. doing the filing. And what this happens is these micro lies, you know, these little things where you're dishonoring your commitments, you're basically not honoring your word at that point, that can erode the trust, right? Why should I believe you and what you're going to say, right? And that's what the wife is saying about the guys, right? They can no longer believe the words that are coming out of the man's mouth because, hey, we all know actions speak louder than words, right? At the same time, the actions that some of these guys are going through are totally different than what they say they want, right? They're not showing if they're missing the events. They, you know, are saying they're doing one thing or going to do one thing and they do another. And over time, they just can't be trusted. Yeah, and it's a tough position for them, you know, especially when I speak with them because they're in so much turmoil. They've wound up in this position where, 
they can no longer ignore the warning signs and they're desperate to reconnect with the wife and reignite the marriage and be closer to their kids. And sometimes they are living separately. Sometimes the wife has said to them they want to separate. Sometimes they've been handed divorce papers. There's so many scenarios. And I can, I can get why they sometimes feel hard done by. I really can. So, you know, how, what advice do you have, Doug, for any guy out there listening? You know, maybe he's in the gym right now or driving his car and his, you know, light bulb is going off. Holy shit, that's me. You know, I'm that guy. Only last night I got home from work and you know, I told my wife I wasn't going to work and I ended up getting the laptop out. And, you know, maybe it's got to the point where your wife hasn't even seen anything anymore, which is, you know, an even worse position to be <laughs> in than her complaining about it. So, what would you say to that guy that thinks he's doing all the right things to provide for his family, but he's wound up in a position where his wife just doesn't trust him? Well, I would say, first of all, guys, a couple of things. One is it's not your fault, right? This is the way society has taught us to be. So it's not your fault, but to get out of this, which has got to be just so painful to have the woman that you hold so dear to you looking at you with those eyes of just distrust. Like, yeah, sure, you're going to do what you say you're going to do. The way out of this is pretty simple, actually. It's coming clean. Now, this is the hardest part, is you got to come clean right away and be honest and truthful. And maybe that honest and, and truthful statement is, I didn't see that I was doing this. And now that I do, and then you want to also really empathize with your partner, with your wife. And say, wow, you know, I, I realize I keep saying that I'm going to be home for dinner and, I, and I'm not making it. Or I keep saying that, um, you know, let's not watch TV at night yet. I keep turning the TV on. I can imagine that that would make you not trust me, right? You want to get into her world a little bit for the, what you've created. Now, after you've come clean to him, this is, again, it's the hardest part. You want to do it authentically. You again, get honest with yourself, come clean. And then you need to start making some micro commitments. And what I mean by that is you want to start doing the small things, the things you said you were going to do. Don't declare them, prove them, right? Show me with your actions, not with your words, right? They always talk about actions speak louder than words. We've all heard that. So now what I want you to do is make a list of the promises that you've made to your wife. Now, this could be you're going to take her on a honeymoon. This could be an anniversary trip, a, a birthday gift you've missed. Or this could be something as simple as you said you're going to take out the trash and you just don't, right? So she can't trust you to do that. Now it's your turn to look at this list and be a man and knock that shit out. Just knock that list out on a regular basis. And not from a point of proving, but now you're in a space where you got to prove yourself, though, to yourself that you can honor your word right? Because your wife doesn't trust you. But guess what? Here's the flip side. You don't trust yourself because you know you're not going to honor your word as well. And so, Tim, the first thing is really coming clean with your wife and, and really just saying, hey, look, this is what I'm seeing. I realize I haven't really been truthful or I haven't been integrous. I haven't honored my own integrity with the things that I say that I'm going to do. And that all gets to change. And don't worry, I'm going to show you Right? And then you make your list of things that you, you haven't had with an integrity. And now you set about actually making that change, making that transition from somebody who says something versus somebody who actually walks the talk. Right? Big difference there. Yeah, so true. And you made a great point there. You, you've got to, in my opinion, if, you know, if you're listening to this, just to you know, jump on the back of your point, Doug, and you have wound up in a position where your wife doesn't trust you, then you've got to do this for you first and foremost because <laughs> you're probably not going to get the reaction that you want from your wife as quickly as you would like it. No, no. Your wife is going to test you. She's going to prod you. She's going to poke you. She's going to want to make sure that this man is actually here to stay. And that's and so that important. Can, yeah, it is, right? You know, the guys have been back from the Alpha Reset. We, we tell them a lot about this and give them specific tools to use to be able to navigate this reintegration, if you like, back into their life. And they always tell us, don't they, the guys that go into the brotherhood, you know, three or four months afterwards, the wives are still prodding them and poking them and testing them. Yeah, It's always going to be there because that's just the nature of 
the beast. Uh, not calling women out their beasts. <laughs> it's just the careful, nature careful. of yeah. It's just the nature of relationships. It's just the dynamic that uh, the masculine, and the feminine often plays out. So you hit the nail on the head, Doug, when you said you know you don't trust yourself. That's the reality, and that is true. I realize, I remember for myself when I realized this about myself that I was making all these promises in my relationship that I wasn't fulfilling. And I looked, you know, where else am I doing that in my life? And it turned out that I was over promising my friends. And then I'd always be late for things or I'd have to cancel things. And it turned out I was over promising clients, which then meant I had too much on my plate and I just couldn't deliver on it. And, you know, inevitably that pulled me further away from my family. But the overall theme was this over promising and I didn't trust which created a, a, a cycle of distrust in myself because, you know, I set the standard so high. It came from a good place. You know, I wanted to help people. I was, you know, I wasn't, I didn't, you know, I wasn't been a dick or anything like that. But regardless of what I knew, uh, the reality of the situation and how it came across to my loved ones was the fact that I simply wasn't following through on what I said I was going to do. Um, so yeah, developing that trust in yourself is such a key, key point. Yeah. And I think you said something that's extremely important for any of the guys that are on this journey is your wife is going to test you again and again. So if you've been like this for, let's say five years, plan on five years of building that trust back up. Now, hopefully it won't take that long, but look, you have a history, a history that she knows very well of not honoring your word. And that's a really important thing to recall. Don't expect that if you've been a jerk for five years that all of a sudden in two weeks, you're going to repair everything and say, Hey, I've changed. That doesn't work that way, guys. Right? <laughs> Plan on do the long game. This is a change within you. This is why we talk about reset, right? The alpha reset is designed. You have to have a reset of who you are, right? Rediscover, reset, realign, and then you move forward, right? It's the same idea here. Right now, your wife has a view of you, and it's time for you to reset that view. <laughs> Do you know what just came to mind? Such a funny memory. So one of the guys who is in the brotherhood, he was telling me how his wife was testing him one day, and they got into a conflict, and he remained very calm, communicated you know, in a very calm manner, didn't rise, didn't get triggered, stayed connected to her, and she turned around and said to him, don't you try that powerful man bullshit on me. <laughs> because he was just using all of his tools and all of the systems and skill sets he'd learned. And he just wasn't rising. He was standing firm in his, in his ground, in his power. And um, she, she said, she went right into the wound. was like, do not try that powerful man shit on me. Oh, it was so funny. It's so, I mean, a few of the guys have said that as well. A few of the guys have told stories like that when the wives have been really testing them. Because again, you know, guys have had years of over-promising and under-delivering for their wife and sometimes their kids as well. And um, it's, as guys, we sometimes have a tendency to forget that. Yeah, I mean, <laughs> look, the guys, you're doing the best you can with the skills you have right now. And if you're in this situation, first of all, it feels like crap, right? When, when the woman, you know, that you love stops looking at you like the knight in shining armor that she used to look at you, like when you first got married, you no longer become the king. You become like the court gesture at your house. And you say things, you make declarations, and she just brushes them off. And that feels like crap. It's time to reset and really regain that trust and it starts with the trust in yourself, but you still need to declare this to your wife that, hey, look, I recognize that this is happening, right? The first thing is admitting it, right? It kind of, we've all heard this idea of admit that you have a problem. Well, it's not a problem, but admit that there is something that's going on and that you realize it. Once you do that, you can now lay the foundation for a new path, a new road for you and your, your wife to walk on. And man, it starts with you leading that path you making the change and you doing a reset and actually really getting on the ball. Tomorrow's not guaranteed. Today is the day to make that change, guys. 
Today is the day to honor your word. Where are you not honoring your word, as we say in The Powerful Man? Where are you not stepping to the line with your wife? Is it the dishes? Is it that you promise to put your cell phone down and not look at your phone at night? Are you promising you're going to get back in shape? You're going to go to the gym? Are you promising you're going to take her on a trip? Or maybe you're just promising you're going to help out more with the kids. Whatever it is, guys, get some optics, get some clarity. This is your integrity. It's the only thing you have at the end of the day is your integrity. And this is your time to get it all cleaned up, time to reset. Mm. Maybe get into a habit of under-promising and over-delivering. You know, promise fewer things, but just go above and beyond. That's going to be a great habit to be in. Sure, sure. You just do what you say you're going to do. Uh, yeah. It worked well for me to under-promise <laughs> over-deliver. That was, uh, that was a great position to be in. Um, and you know, I just want to add a caveat to that, Doug, before we sign this episode off. I don't know whether this concept of, of leading yourself and trusting yourself. I know years ago for me, when I used to hear things like this, it sounded like such big ideas. Well, how do I trust myself? What does that mean? Do I even trust myself? You know, there were so many different avenues that, it opened up for me when I started to become aware of this way of operating. And it's not as, you know, it's not as big and as scary or as even deep and daunting as you might be thinking right now. But this is why you know, we came up with the system, the tried of connection, and give it to the men so they're able to actually use a system rather than thinking that you know, they've got to make some huge internal shifts. Because quite frankly, guys, you know, you don't need to make some huge internal shifts. Yeah, of course, lead and trust yourself and, and so on. But what we found in the men we work with, and if you're anything like them, then all of that is already inside of you anyway. It's just waiting to be activated, kind of like a, a vo dormant volcano, right? There's so much power and curiosity in that volcano just ready to erupt. It's the same with you. It's the same with how you conduct your life as a powerful man. There's so much there already to work with. It's just about having the right tools and system and support as well. That always helps to actually bring it out. Um, so if you want to find out more about that as well, guys, head over to the alpha reset.com and uh, you'll be able to learn a lot more there. Awesome. Well, guys, that's up. That's a wrap for another episode of The Powerful Man Show. We'll see you next time. In the meantime, make sure you rate and review on whatever station you get this on, iTunes, Spotify, or Google Play. We look forward to seeing you in the next episode.